guys, welcome back to my channel, Sass here. I'm here to do another review of 90 Day Fiance, The Other Way. For some reason, I was thinking this was two hours, it's only an hour. And furthermore, it ain't noon, because I told y'all I was going to put this up at noon. Well, that didn't happen. Child, that overtime kicked my tail, y'all. Mm-mm-mm. <laughs> it kicked my tail, but I'm here. All right. Nothing really happened this episode. In fact, it was dry, dry. Nothing happened. We did find out that June, he ain't packing down now, according to Dev. Well, I call her D. Honey, D let it be known that she got extra snug condoms. I didn't even know condoms come in extra snug. What you dealing with, D? What June got down there? Itty bitty teeny weeny. Do do, he's a little guy. <laughs> wow. It was enough to make a baby, though. Let's talk about June and D. As we know, he's from South Korea and lazy. Let's just call it in. We grown over here. June lazy. Okay, he don't want to work. He is the Asian version of Andre. Let's just say what it is. Then we have D. D is a 22-year-old from Utah. Okay. Now, they met on an international dating site. And, of course, like all of the other, you know, um, participants, sports flew. I knew he was the one. Uh, you know, they were so in love. So, three months in, um, June flew over to the United States, and the very first time they had sex with that itty bitty, itty bitty, teeny weeny little wiener. <laughs> he has a little little wiener, extra snug, child by, ooh, mm. The first time they had sex, she gets pregnant. My God. So, she decided to move over to um, South Korea to be with June. And um, listen, okay, June told a whole lot of stuff, okay, you know, that he, you know, is getting a place, never got a place. They ended up staying with, you know, his parents, okay. He had a whole lot of promises that he couldn't keep. He also had a $15,000 fine that he needed to pay off. Now, he was selling phones, stolen phones. He made it clear. He didn't steal the phones. He didn't steal them. He just sold the phones. <laughs> June is a mess. So we have now, okay, here we have um, D. She done moved back to um, Utah, and you know, her and her adorable, God, that baby is so cute, so cute, just cute, but anyway, she's packing up her stuff, because she is moving back to Korea to be with June, because you know, she's saying that, you know, June has got himself together. Okay, June is, you know, working and he's getting an apartment for them. You know, something that a husband um, would do. All right. Now, her mom is going to go with her over to Korea. And she, as she should. As she should. So, she's telling her mom all this. And her mom's facial expressions was like, girl. You know, because her mom is like, listen, I don't even know. He, look at what all he told you the last time. Okay? Now, he lied to you on several occasions, but you're going to go back over there with my grandkids. And you think you're going to live this happy, loving life. All right. All right. Okay. Well, I'm going to be there with you. All right? So, we'll see what happens. So, she FaceTimes June. Now, June, he's getting a haircut, and so the barber man is telling him, look, you need some motivation. You need a skill. You are doing nothing. I mean nothing. What are you doing? And, of course, June, you know, him saying that, you know, he's saying that he's not motivated. He don't have no type of, you know, oomph in his step. So he is FaceTiming D. 
And so D was like, how's work? Where you work at again? How much you get paid? Because see, I'm paying $2,000 a month for an apartment. Let me say that again, friends. She's paying $2,000 a month for an apartment. She says, I'm the one that's contributing financially to this relationship. How much you getting paid? Now, here is June, he and then Howard, talking about, uh, yeah, uh, $3,000. She said, $3,000. She said, what do you do again? He said, Tile. She says, okay, she says, but wait a minute. You told me you're making deliveries. So, you got two jobs. He was like, yeah, 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 I got two jobs. And she said, so, the two jobs combined $3,000? And he was like, no, 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 um, seven, eight thousand. First of all, June don't even know how much money he makes. Now, for people who have jobs, they know how much money they make. They know how much they are bringing home. June done put out three different numbers. 3,000, 7,000, 8,000. I think he even said 6,000. He said he doing towel and deliveries. Y'all, June ain't got no job. June is not working. He ain't got no apartment lined up. Because, see, when she goes over there, she expects to be in an apartment. Because she says she ain't living with that mom and daddy. Mm, mm, mm. What a mess when she gets so bad with them youngins. What a mess. Let's move on. Ooh, this ain't gonna... Oh, Lord, I told y'all this ain't gonna be long. Let's talk about Yazan and Brittany, child. Yazan, he is um, talking to his brother. And his brother, of course, and the family is not really up with Brittany coming over to, um, coming over for a visit. His brother said, listen here, okay, she ain't the one for you. Let's just say she ain't the one for you. Man, why couldn't you marry one of your own? Why can't you date one of your own? You know, a nice little Muslim girl from, you know, the town or a local. And then Yazan's brother said, why can't you be with someone who's a relative? I'm going to need some help with this, friends. Of course, Yazan says that his family would rather for him to be with a Muslim girl, someone local, someone he's related to. He even said that his parents are related. They all like to keep it in the family. Talk to me, friends. Talk to me. Is this something normal in the Muslim community? To, to marry, have children with a relative? Because, honey, in these neck of the woods, you're going to be looking at... Mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. No. We, 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 we... And they, no. Mm -mm. No. So... Apparently, that is something that they do. So, of course, Yazan's brother says, listen, you know, you really need to think about this. Me, myself, and the family don't think that really Brittany is the one. Okay? She just ain't the one. But, of course, Yazan says that he ain't even bothering with that. Brittany is, you know, the one that he wants to be with. But he does have concern with Brittany in her um, way. Okay, we see how Brittany dresses, honey. She can't be going over there with the tits out and the cheeks out and twerking on the side of a car. She can't be doing all that. Okay, she has to wear the traditional attire that is associated with his culture. Okay, she can't be going down there squeezing herself into some baby fat. Brittany look like somebody who wear baby fat though. I ain't even front. I ain't front. And she also look like somebody who have like a knockoff of like a Gucci purse. Brittany a trip, y'all. Brittany is a trip. I'm seeing it right now. Brittany is what I need. Brittany's gonna be what I need. So, we have Brittany. And Yazan also says that he is 
afraid that when Britney gets over there and she cut a shine, that his family will disown him. Child, honey, you banking a whole lot on Britney. You banking a whole lot. So we have Britney. We have Britney. She is packing up her whole life. She even got her wig head. And she said, I'm off. I am ready to go to be with you. Um, I'm ready. Oh, Lord. I am ready to go to be with Yazan. And um, I'm ready. So she also says that she is going to have to break it to him that technically she is still married. She's concerned about how he gonna react. How you think he gonna react? You carried on this whole relationship with Yazan and you have yet to tell this man you're packing up your whole life and moving. And you have yet to tell this man you're still married. What is wrong with these people? Someone said in the comments, I can't, oh, I can't remember their name. In my comments said, has anybody thought that maybe it was Brittany who had her ex-husband deported because he was such a jerk? Because he was so, you know, mean to her. Maybe she had him deported. And maybe that's why he is not willing to sign any type of papers. Wouldn't that be something? Brittany, did you have your your husband deported, child? And it's the back five. <laughs> child, anyway. So, you know, she's talking to her dad. And somebody also said in the comments was like, I'm trying to figure out if he's a zaddy or not. Now listen, last week I was like, he cute, he a handsome man. But then he opened up his mouth and I was like, no, he ain't cute. But maybe he was just being a little awkward, you know, for the camera. And he just, but then this week I was thinking to myself, okay, uh-huh, Papa Brittany is handsome. He could be a zaddy. He could be a zaddy. Ah, he is good looking. But um, anyway. Um, so Brittany is talking to her dad. And she was like, listen, it could take six to ten months before I could even get a divorce. Okay. I need to tell him. How do I tell him, dad? And so the dad was like, you're going to have to talk to your son. You're going to have to talk to this man and tell him the truth. You packing up your whole life and you moving over there and you have to tell this man you're still married. Drive by. So they get to the airport and of course her luggage was overweight because um, that, you know, wig head. But anyway, um, that was a sweet moment between Britney's dad and her. And Britney's dad, he got a little bit emotional and very sweet. He looks like he's a very sweet father. So... Honey, I don't know what Brittany's going to do, but child, we see next week, Yazan has a blow up. A blow up. Brittany's just standing there with her luggage and Yazan is going off. So, Brittany and Yazan is a mess. Is a mess. All right, let's move on. Let's talk about Kenneth and um, Armando. This ain't going to take long. Kenneth is having Thanksgiving dinner with his family because he's not going to be there. Of course, he's going to be um, in Mexico with Armando. And he tells his family that Armando is not in his late 30s. That Armando is 31 years old. And he has an engagement ring. And he is going to propose to Armando. Of course, you know, his daughter, one of his daughters talked about it. And she feels very uncomfortable about it. She says that she believes that he may be Russian this whole marriage thing because even though they have been dating for three years they've only had met a couple of times they haven't really spent a whole lot of time together so she feels like that her dad may be rushing it just a little bit nothing much there y'all nothing much with Kenneth so let's move on all right now let's talk about some and Jiggle that Jenny. Honey, Samut is having a hard time, y'all, emotionally. So, he is moving into his new place because he's getting himself ready for um Jenny. 
So he's there with his brother. Now I will say this, Smith's brother is cute. He's a little cutie. But anyway, he's talking to his brother and he's saying that even though you all don't agree with my relationship with Jenny, Jeannie was there when you all wasn't. Because see, Samus' brother said, listen, my parents, they are not accepting of this. Okay? And it has to do with the age. Okay? This woman is older than my mom. Alright? She's older than my mom. And my parents are having a problem with that. Okay? Well, Samut was like, oh well. Okay? You were not there for me. My parents was not there for me. Basically, he was saying, you know, they just kicked me to the curb. Okay? I had to do this on my own. I had to do that on my own. No one had my back. You didn't have my back. Mom and Dad didn't have my back. But you know who had my back? Jiggle Net Jenny. She had my back. Okay? And it hurt my feelings that my family didn't even give me any type of support. And so his brother, I think, felt a little bad about that. And his brother was like, you're right. You're, you're right. And his brother said, you know what? I want to talk to mom and dad. You know, I, I want to see, you know, what I can can do. And while Suma is, is telling his brother all this, he was getting teary-eyed. He was getting emotional. You could tell he was getting, you know, upset. But honey, he is ready. For Jiggle Net Jenny. Now let's talk about this 61 year old woman who acts like she's 12. Jiggle Net is getting ready. She is packing up her life and she says she is ready for some month in her life um, over there where he's at. So her daughters are there and um, her uh, daughter in law, she's there. So here comes the daughter. She says, Listen, you know, did you have receipts? You know, receipts meaning divorce papers. Have you seen those divorce papers? And so here comes Jenny talking about, oh, well, no. Something about it was a holiday and the courts was closed. Excuse, excuse, excuse. You know, I haven't seen those papers yet. I ain't even seen the edge of a paper, a crinkling of a paper. I'm just going by what Suna told me, okay? I'm going to have to believe what he says, okay? I mean, maybe I should have asked for um, a copy of the divorce papers, but hey, we here. Here is a 61-year-old woman who has been burned. I mean burned. He had a whole life. A whole different life. Okay, you took out everything you worked for, your 401k, everything you have worked for for 80 years. And now you have taken an early retirement just to go over there and try to live a life with some. You have taken an early retirement, your social security. So, of course, her daughters are very apprehensive. They do not want their mother, first of all, to get hurt again. Second of all, to go over there. Okay, But she says that she loves them and she trusts them and she believes them. And she is going over there and hopefully third time is the charm. Jeannie's a silly woman to me. She's just a silly, silly woman. I just don't understand her, her mentality. You are banking a lot on a 31-year-old man who don't even live in your country. You have nothing. Absolutely nothing. Child, whatever. All right, whatever. Okay. We'll see how this works out. Okay. We'll see between Jiggle Net Genius and me. <laughs> Let's move on. All right, let's talk about Ariel and Benjamin. R and B. Ha! <laughs> One of my uh, subscribers put that in the comment. I said, now that's cute, cute. Let me just run with that. Thank you, gal. So, nothing much here, child. As we know, she is ready to go to Ethiopia to be with um, B. And um, 
She's having dinner with her family for uh, the last time. Um, the meatballs look delicious. Okay. Apparently, they cook overnight. I mean, the meatballs look good. So, they're having um, dinner with the family. And, of course, they're bringing up, you know, Benami and Ethiopia. And are you ready for this? I hope you're ready for this. And they bring up his past. Now, apparently, B has been married before to an American woman. She packed up her life and moved to Ethiopia to be with him. She has a child by him, two years old, two and a half years old. But guess what? Something happened. Something went down in Ethiopia. And her and that child came back to the United States. And they are not on speaking terms. Red flag. That's a red flag right there, all. You mean to tell me that you are involved with a man who was married to an American woman, has a child, and she done left, went back to the United States, and they don't have any type of co um, contact? He don't have no contact with his child? What's going on here? If that was me, I would want to know, listen, what happened? Because R is saying, well, I really don't know what happened. He really ain't done. Get to the bottom of it. But hey, she's already pregnant by him, so well, oh well. I guess she's cool with not knowing. I would be cool with not knowing. I want to know everything. Why y'all ain't talking? Why don't you have any type of contact with your child? Is it on you? Is it on her? Is it on both? What happened? Before I pick up my life and I go over and live with you in Ethiopia. But oh no. Oh no. She tells her family, don't worry about it. It's all good. She feels like that her family is judging him and they don't even know him. Well, I'm sorry. If that was my daughter or my sister, I would be doing a lot of judging. In fact, I would be doing a lot of judging when it comes to these folks. If my mom was Jiggle Net G uh, Jenny, I would be upset. My nerves would be shot. I would really be upset by that because I would feel like that my mom is a particular age. She's 61 years old. She's moving her whole life across the country to be with someone who has already lied to her. And here she's just living, you know, fancy free. She has nothing, nothing that would concern me as a daughter. That would concern me. But anyway, um, so I see... Her family being a little, you know, apprehensive. And her dad, her dad, her dad was like, you couldn't find a nice little Jewish boy. You had to find somebody from Ethiopia. And she was like, look, I fell in love with who I fell in love with. Now, here's another thing that comes up. Religion. She is Jewish. He is Ethiopian. He is Ethiopian Orthodox Christian. She says that she wants to raise, you know, the child as um, the Jewish religion. Well, he has his own religion. Maybe he don't want to raise that child as Jewish. She says she's not converted. So we already know there's going to be a battle there religious-wise. I don't understand these people. If you fall in love with someone of a different religion, that is a conversa a strong conversation that y'all need to have before anything is laid down. Your legs spread, laid on your back, I mean anything. Before you pack up your life and decide to move across country with, to be with someone, all these conversations need to be had. I mean, I... But anyway, she says that she's not converting. She is Jewish. She's going to raise that child Jewish. So we shall see what B, you know, has to say about that. If he is someone who has a strong religious background, I mean, that's going to cause some waves. But anyway, um, we shall see. She's very laid back, isn't she? It's like she, she's not really bothered by anything. Just it's interesting. But anyway, um, that's it, friends. I think I hit everybody. Nothing went.
it on. Okay. Let's hope that, you know, next week will give us a little bit of something. But anyway, y'all know the routine. Don't forget to hit that like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, friends, bye.